Hello from the Forstronics YouTube channel and welcome to an easy way to create an NRF 24L01 transceiver wireless network. So that's what we're going to talk about in this video. I hope you appreciate this graphic if you're, you know, from a western country, I'll say that easy like Sunday morning is a song. So that's that's the joke there. Uh, before I get started, as always, I'll mention uh, check out forstronics.com for some of the design training or manufacturing services Forstronics offers, as well as check us out on Facebook or subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't done so so far, or if you like what you see in this video, please hit the thumbs up. All right, let's get started. Okay, so what are we gonna cover in this video tutorial? Well, we're gonna look at a super easy, low cost way to create a wireless network, whether you wanna create a sensor network, a home automation network, or a sensor network that you eventually wanna to report to the cloud, Whatever it is, um, this video is an easy way to set up that wireless network. And for this, we're going to use the NRF24L01 from Nordic. And I have a lot of actually videos on this wireless module. I'm a big fan of it. And so if you haven't seen it before, you could check out my getting started video. I also have other videos on how to use it in a network, which I'll, which I'll mention. But what I'll do is in the video description section of, of this video, I'll provide a link to my playlist that has my different videos on the NRF 24L01. And by the way, in parentheses, I have or one of the ripoffs because uh, really most of the modules out there, and, and I say modules, but really the NRF 24L01 is a chip and it's from Nordic, but its recipe has been copied and it's now mass produced by low cost companies. So it's not good for Nordic, but there's a lot of low cost versions of these on the market. And that's one of the reasons I like it. It's low cost. It has a great range. It's low power. So it's great for battery applications. And there's a lot of open source libraries and tutorials out there for Arduino or Raspberry Pi users. Now notice I say great range. Well, there's different versions of this module, and I'm not going to go too much into this, but I have two of them on the right. So the most common one is the one on the top that has a PCB antenna. Now, the PCB antenna limits its range, and also it doesn't have an amplifier stage on its output. So that limits that one's range. But the 1700 feet, you can find these modules that have the chip on them with additional amplification stages. So the one on the bottom right is one I use a lot for long distances. And they have various ones like this out there, but I recommend ones that are shielded. If you don't get the shielded one, sometimes you can blank out the receiver during a transmit stage and it actually will cause you a lot of trouble. I've experienced it firsthand. Anyway, I'll, I'll do a plug. You can get both of these types of modules at my uh, website, forstronics.com. I'm a big fan of these. They're great. And there's also op a lot of options out there for creating networks with them. The first one is if you check out the data sheet, Nordic has a built-in hardware sort of network capability. They call it the multi-sieiver mode. So it allows you to set up easily set up a network of six transmitters and one receiver. So you can imagine this is we grade in a wireless sensor network type configuration where you have you know six or less transmitters transmitting sensor data to a receiver. And they make this easy to do in software, and I have a video on this but it's limited to only six nodes and it's really more of a transceiver, excuse me, transmitter receiver configuration. There's also some open source libraries on setting up networks with these, the RF24 network and the RF24 mesh. I've talked to these, I talk about these in other videos I have on the NRF24 L01. These are great libraries. They're a little complex though, so you may not need them, right? And, and what's special about the mesh and the, and the network libraries is they allow you to create a mesh network where nodes can talk through other nodes to get to the master node. So anyway, I just wanted to point out there is other networking options, but that's not what we're gonna talk about. We're gonna talk about a really easy way to set up a network and it can be much larger than just six transmitters. So here's you know four bullets on the easy concept. And so if you're familiar with the NRF 24 L01, they have something called a pipe address, right? And typically they want your nodes to have individual pipe addresses. Well, guess what? What if we set all of our nodes to have the same pipe address? So let's, let's take the wireless sensor network example, right? So we have you know, a bunch of transmitters, maybe we have five, 10 or 20 reporting data to a receiver that is then storing that data or sending it to the cloud or whatever. 
Well, what if we gave all those transmitters the same pipe address? That way our receiver doesn't have to change its address and look for a certain transmitter. We don't have to switch addresses. We don't have to use any complexity in the code to try to get to different addresses. So we could do that. The receiver just won't know what transmitter it's getting data from because they all have the same pipe address. Well, an easy way to solve that is to embed in the data packet, and once again, I'm gonna show all this in, in my code, is to embed in the data packet a custom address. So you're putting the address in software. So if I create a structure in software, and I have you know, a int to store my sensor data or a float, I could also have you know, a byte or a short int where I put my address. So this one could be trans transmitter one, transmitter two, transmitter three, so on and so forth. And the idea is when the receiver receives a data packet, it unpacks the packet and it looks what address set it. So then it knows which transmitter or which wireless sensor node is sending that data. So this is real easy to do, especially in code. Now, the, the one risk, or one of the risks, is collisions. What if transmit, two transmitters transmit at the same time? Or one transmits 100 microseconds before the other one? You could have a collision where the receiver misses the data from the one that transmitted slightly later. It's easy to overcome that because they have a feature where you can set up automatic retries. So I can tell it to, you know, if you transmit to the receiver and you never get an acknowledgement package, retry five times in two millisecond intervals. So you can set that for these. So that helps eliminate the collisions. And, you know, collisions are rarely going to happen unless you have some kind of really exact trigger or synchronization method between your nodes. And even if you do have that, you just stagger the, the synchronization so they're not all arriving at the same time. The data could all be collected at the same time, but they all just delay when they send it to the receiver. Now you could also do this the reverse way. What if you have a single transmitter and you have a home automation set up where you wanna tell the other nodes what to do? So in that case, you would transmit out, all the nodes would get it, but they would unpack the data and see which one the command is meant for, which address. Now that'll work similar to what I just said. The only downside to that is it may, if you're using battery power, you may be eating up a little more battery power because all the receivers in the field are gonna get every transmission. Okay, we're gonna look at a code example though with the first type of paradigm I said where you have more of a wireless sensor network where you have transmitters that are sending to a single receiver. Okay, so here's the demo setup. So first I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, sh I'm showing my nodes, I guess you could say, and then I'll show a serial monitor where, where my receiver is constantly getting data from different transmitters, and I'm showing the fake data as well as the address. And then we'll look through the code to see how it was done and how easy it was done. Okay, so here's a sample I set up. I just used four NRF 24L01s. One of them is a receiver, the other three are transmitters. You can see I'm using, once again, I'll plug my website, forstronics.com. I sell these shields where you can easily put them on. Uh, here's a custom board that I made, and you'll see wires and stuff on these because I've used these for various prototyping type projects. Notice I have the, the pigtail or PCB mounted antenna on some of them, and I'm showing one with the longer distance range. Uh, in my setup, this one with the button is gonna be the, uh, the receiver, and the other three are gonna be transmitters. Now, ever since I started this video, I've been collecting data, right? So I set up my network and I have each trans transmitter sending data every three seconds. And it could be every half second, every one second, every minute, or every hour, it doesn't matter, whatever you wanna set it for. And you can kind of see they come in and in the right order. Don't pay attention to the node sensor value. It's just sending a random number from a zero to 255. It's just meant to be fake sensor data. So what I did is I have a packet that's a structure and it has two variables. One is the address and one is the sensor value. And so you can see I'm printing the node address from each packet I send so I know where the data is coming from. And I've just had this running for a while and you know there's no issues of course. Uh, and you can even see in the beginning the network master is online. First I set up node two so it got a lot of packets from node two and then I had node one running so it's getting them from there. 
and then eventually I get node 3 hooked up sometime in here. So once again, real simple example. I'm showing it with three transmitters, but it could be 13, could be 33. It could probably be 100, right? If you have too many, you'll eventually get collisions. But as long as the code on the receiver is pretty simple, it gets the data, it clears it out of the buffer, stores it, and it's ready to read the next one. So collisions, I think, are going to be rare, especially at low sensor counts. And once again, we have a way to deal with collisions, and I'll, I'll show that in the code. Okay, so we saw it working. Let's look at the code for both the what I'm calling the master or the receiver and the three transmitters. Okay, so first we're looking at the master code. And so here's the libraries I need, and I'm using one of the open source libraries. Uh, and I'll, you can see a link in the code to access that library. There's a couple different versions of them out there. You can see I'm using the TR, TMR H20 version. But this just provides the basic functions to access the capabilities in the NRF 24L01 modules. Uh, I need to set up a, pins, a CE pin and a CSN pin. And you can see in the comments what those are for. So I use pin 9 or pin 10. You can use any digital pin. I create an, a library object for controlling the, the wireless sensor. And, and maybe I, I, I didn't say this, so, so people who are new to this wireless module, it's important to note, I have a Arduino microcontroller that's using spy communication to control, set up, and read data from the wireless chip. So that's how things are set up, for those of you who are not familiar with this, with this wireless chip. I then define my pipe address. And I'm only going to need a single pipe address. They use a long format pipe address. If you notice, I'm real mature. I spell boobies in it. Uh, I then set my channel. So this is not to be confused with the, with the channels of the transmitter. This is the frequency channel. You don't have to set this. You can just use whatever the default is. But you can use some frequency between 2.484 gigs and 2.489 gigs. All right, here's my payload. So this is a structure. And so I have something in here for my channel. My channel is could be called the address of the transmitter that I'm defining in software. And then something for my sensor data. If you saw one of my past tutorials on here, you can even make this much bigger, right? You could have something for battery status. You know, do I have a low battery or not? So you can put, you can make the structure bigger if you'd like. I then define uh, an object for the structure. I then I called my object for the library wireless spy. So I do the begin and you, this is all in the documentation uh, for the library. I set the channel. Once again, you don't have to do this. I open the reading pipe. So I'm basically, when I say I open the reading pipe, I'm defining what address and this is this address up here. And then I start listening. So these are transceivers, but they can't transceive, they can't receive and transmit at the same time. So you're basically saying, I want you to be in receiver mode. I also then set up, you know, serial communication so we can display the data. I say that the master's online. And then look how simple this code is. Now, of course, if you're doing other stuff with this, you're gonna have more code, but look just how simple it is to get sensor data from a network. I put in the loop an if statement that says, you know, when, I, when there's data available, let me know, and then I'll read it. So this is where I read it, and basically I'm passing in my struct object by reference. So I'm, I'm, I'm sending in a pointer to it. I then have to tell it what, what its size is, so this knows how much data to expect to receive. And since we're not, I'm not sending dynamic data, it's always the same size, so that makes it easy. I then print out, you know, got data from node address, and then I payload.channel. So then all of a sudden that's how I know what transmitter just sent me data. And then here's the dummy sensor data. And then I just exit the loop and that's it. That's it for the master. So pretty simple code for setting up a wireless network. Now let's look at the, I call it the node sketch. Okay, using the same libraries, a lot of these same variable setups. The a difference here is um, this R delay and R num is defining my retries and the, the time between retries. So basically you can do retries at 250 microseconds at the lowest end and then increments above that. So I did seven. So zero is 250 microseconds, seven is you know two milliseconds. It's basically 250 microseconds times eight. 
I then say retry five times and, and I think you can do up to 15 and there's a limit on how much delay you can do and but that's in the documentation for the library so I say try five times with two millisecond delays once again this is just in case you, it, collisions are not really going to happen too often I then define variables for channels and using digital pins and we'll see this way I can use the same code for whatever node I'm using Here's the same payload structure, except in, instead of receiving data and putting it in the payload, we're putting data in the payload and sending it. For my channel selection, all right, I'll, I'll explain how I do the channel selection. I define these three digital pins, and you can pick whatever digital pins you want, as pull-ups. So they, they are automatically high, and I, I set them for inputs. Then I have a function that I call in the setup called set channel. And so for each of my three nodes, I ground one of those pins and that sets the channel for that, um, for that node. And once again, you can do this a bunch of different ways. You could have separate code for each node and just hard code in their address. You could have some kind of interface where you set the address. I'm just doing it real simple here. Okay, if we go back up to the setup, a lot of this you'll recognize. Here's where I set the number of retries and the delay. And then uh, I open my writing pipe and then I stop listening, right? Because I'm a transmitter. So I'm going to stop listening. Nothing can send me data, but I can, I can send data to the, to the receiver. I just use this random seed to send random uh, data. And here's where I set the channel. And then I'm just delaying three seconds, which is just an arbitrary number I picked out. I get my fake sensor data using the random function. I then transmit. And so I, and what happens is if, if this succeeded, this is true, this function, if it fails, it'll be false. Okay. So here's my payload and the size of the payload, just like the read function. And I even have another backup in here. And I just kind of put this in there for an example purpose. Keep in mind this function right here, if it fails at first, it will try five more times. Let's say it for whatever reason, which I think will not happen, but let's say it fails all five times. Well, then I put in a random delay between five milliseconds and 20 milliseconds where I try it again. And once again, that will try five times. And then here, you know, if you wanted to, you could put in some kind of error subroutine or something like that. But once again, real simple code, you can set up a large wireless sensor network or a large home automation network and a real easy way to manage that, that sensor network. Okay, that's it for an easy way to create an NRF 24L01 wireless network. I appreciate you listening in. If you have anything to add, use the comment section below. If you have any questions from content in the video, use the comment section below. And if you like what you saw, hit the thumbs up. Thank you for watching.